Hello, my name is Timo Dumla. I'm C++ developer advocate at JetBrains. And today I'll show you how C-Lines parameter hints and type hints help you with reading and understanding your code. Here, I have a little example app using Juice. Juice is a C++ cross-platform application framework, which is quite powerful and easy to use. You can learn more about it at juice.com. This app here is just a single GUI component that has a rounded rectangle in blue and then prints the current time in there in black font. And that's it. You can do all of this in Juice relatively easily, but Juice has quite a few functions which take lots of arguments of type int or bool, and sometimes it's not obvious what they mean. Here, this draw rounded rectangle function takes six numbers, and you'd kind of expect that the first four are probably related to position and size, but we don't know exactly in what order, and we have no idea what the last two are for. Further down, we are converting the current time to a string using juice time to string. And it takes these four Boolean values. And even if you code in juice every day, you probably won't remember what they mean. And here's where CLine's parameter hints can help. They show you the names of function parameters for the past arguments. And that's quite useful here. We now see the meaning of all six parameters for the rounded rectangle. And we see that the last two relate to the corner size and the line thickness. And for the time to string function, it is now pretty obvious how these four parameters relate to how the time should be displayed. For example, if you want to include the date, we now know that we just need to change the first argument from false to true. And we don't have to look at any other code anywhere else to immediately see this. CLine grabs the parameter names from the function declaration, which you can see in full if you hover over the function name with the mouse. The hints are enabled by default, so if you use CLine, you are already using them, but you can also toggle them on and off. That can be useful, for example, if a line of code is getting too long, or if the hints are somehow in the way. You can find the relevant keyboard shortcut, like all the other keyboard shortcuts, by going to Find Action and looking for parameter hints. There are a few more interesting details about parameter hints. Here, the parameter name text isn't shown as a hint because the argument already had that exact name and we don't want to display the same information twice. Parameter hints also work intelligently with functions like make shared, make unique and in place back that forward constructor arguments. If for example, I create a std vector of colors and then in place back into the vector, I get parameter hints for the constructor arguments of the element I'm creating. Let's say I want to erase this element again, and here I'm using the new C++20 overload of std erase, taking a vector by reference, and it's not a const reference, so it will modify my vector. In this case, you get the special parameter hint ampersand colon, telling you that you're passing something by non-const reference. And that's sometimes very useful if you can see that directly at the call site. Now, if you right click on a parameter hint, you also have the option to disable hints for a particular function call. Maybe it's a function you call very often and you don't like the hint to be displayed in that case. There is an exclude list here in the settings where you can specify all the functions for which you want to disable parameter hints. There's a special pattern matching syntax you can use here, which is explained at the bottom of this exclude list window. Now, sometimes the parameter hints don't give you enough info. And then of course you also have other options. You can navigate to the declaration with command click or control click. You can hover over the function with the mouse to see the declaration, or you can display the parameter info tooltip, which will also show you the parameters of all the available overloads of this function, if there are any. Parameter hints have been in CLine for a while, but in CLine version 2021.3, we also introduced a new feature called type hints. Type hints are also enabled by default. So if you're on the latest version of CLine, you should already see them but you can also switch them on and off if you like. Let me just switch them on here in the settings. Now, whenever there's a deduced type in the code but the type name isn't spelled out, a type hint is going to show you what that type name is. For example, here we have a variable auto text and the hint is telling us that's of type string. Well, that's probably unsurprising. However, note that it's not a std string, but a string with a capital S. So that's the string class of the juice framework we're using here. The hints are actually interactive so you can Command click it on macOS or control click on Windows and Linux and it's going to take you directly to the definition of that type. Type hints are shown not only for auto variables, but also for structured bindings. For example, if I want to get the XY position of the component I'm drawing into here, I can now see that in juice those are ints and not floats or doubles. If the deduce type is a class template, like here std tie returns a std tuple, 
The hint is also showing us the template arguments, and if I click on the angle brackets, I can hide and unhide them. Now, if you have a function that has an auto return type, type hints are also going to display the actual return type that's being deduced. For example, if I add a member function here that returns the first child component of this component, we can see that this juice function actually returns a pointer to a component rather than a reference, which otherwise isn't obvious. This also works with lambdas, so if we were to make this a lambda expression, we can see that again it displays the return type here. If we assign this lambda to a variable, the type hint won't display the type of this variable, that's just some unspecified lambda type, but it will display the signature of the lambda call operator, which is actually a lot more useful. So if you, for example, add an integer parameter, you can see now how the full signature of the call operator is now shown in the type hint here. And finally, just like with parameter hints, with type hints we also have some options here in the settings to configure what type of hints you'd like to display. And that's how parameter hints and type hints work in C-Line. If you don't have the latest version yet, but you'd like to give it a try, you can download a 30-day free trial on jetbrains.com slash C-Line and check it out. Thanks for watching.